All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome you to the regular city council meeting for Tuesday, June the 7th. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic emergency, we have to conduct to handle our city council meetings a little differently than we have in the past for the protection of the public and our city staff. I'm now going to ask our city manager, Mr. Hines, to give a brief, a brief explanation. Mr. Hines. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Although this meeting of the Gold City Council is being conducted in person, today's agenda states that we're also using audio-only teleconference options, which allow the public to provide live public comment remotely. Members of the public may use the Zoom link described in the agenda to enter the webinar via audio only, and they should be able to use the raise their hand feature option um, when the mayor announces the time for general public comment or when a specific agenda item is called if your comment concerns an item on the agenda. Attendees should also see a lower hand feature if they change their mind and do not want to speak. Members of the public may also use the call-in feature described in the agenda. Uh, you may just listen if you prefer, but if you would like to speak when the mayor announces the time for public comment, you may do so by pressing star nine at that time. We request that all speakers in person and on the phone provide their name and address when they are called on to speak, but doing so is not requirement required. Today's agenda states that residents may submit written public comments via email to pubcom at cityofgault.org prior to the council meeting, which will be distributed to the city council, made part of the official minutes, and posted on the city's website prior to the meeting. Uh, Mr. Mayor, that concludes my comments. All right, thank you, sir. I'll call, now call the meeting to order. Can I have a roll call, please? Just one. There it goes. Vice Mayor Sandu. Here. Council Member Papineau. Here. Council Member Vandenberg. Here. Council Member Lozano. Here. Mayor Farmer. Here. If everyone could please join us in a silent prayer, flow, followed by the flag salute. <laughs> Tina, can you please read our replay statement? <clears throat> this, this meeting of the Galt City Council will be cablecast on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel, on the Comcast Consolidated Communications and AT&T UVerse cable systems. The meeting is closed captioned and webcast at metro14live.sacccounty.gov. Today's meeting will air Friday, June 10th at 9 a.m. and Saturday, June 11th at 9 a.m. This meeting can also be viewed at youtube.com forward slash Metro Cable 14. All right, thank you. Moving on to item B, agenda approval, additions and or deletions. Do we have anything from council this evening? Yeah, on item F6, um, I actually live inside of uh, LLD3, so you need to separate that one or just let the record state, I think it, you can just let the record state that my vote will not count towards that item if you want to do them all at once. Okay. Is that correct, Mr. Sendario? Yeah, yeah that's, uh, you can take that on the record now. I would all, I'll also put that on the memory of this item. Oh, sorry. All right, thank you, Councilman Vandenberg. Anything uh, from council, anything else? All right, move on to item C, presentations. Our first tonight is gonna to be the Galt Youth Commission, student member appointments, and administering the oath of office. Tina? 
Okay, so tonight's item is the accept the student member appointment selected by the Galt Youth Commission adult mentors. And they're also, also going to be taking their oath of office. So if those members want to come up to the front, I will give you your oath. Hi, I'm Karina Lalian. I'm a ninth grader at Galt High. I'm Alexia Bulian. I am also a ninth grader at Galt High. I'm Kaysen Jones, and I'm going into my junior year at Galt High. Um, I'm Mike. Bu I'm Mikey Booksy. I am going into my uh, ninth grade year at Liberty Ranch High School. Hello, my name is Alexa Merlokovas. That I will support and defend. I will support, support and defend. defend the Constitution of the United States. Constitution, Constitution of the United States. States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. Bear true true faith faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, to the, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. And I take this obligation freely, without any, without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and during such time. During such time, as I am a member, student member, as I'm a student, student member of the Galt Youth Commission, of the Galt Youth, Youth Commission, I will faithfully discharge the duties. I will faithfully discharge, discharge the duties of commission member, of commission member, according to the best of my ability. To the best, according to the best of my ability. Congratulations to each of you, and I want to thank all of you for wanting to be a part of uh, your community and volunteering for this position, or applying for the position. Look forward to serving with you guys. And we do need a motion to... Okay. Looking for a motion to accept the student member appointments selected by the Galt Youth Commission Adult Mentors. So moved. Uh, moved by Councilman Lozano and seconded by Vice Mayor Sandu. Can I have a roll call, please? Vice Mayor Sandu. Aye. Councilmember Papineau? Aye. Councilmember Vandenberg? Aye. Councilmember Lozano? Aye. Mayor Farmer? Aye. Uh, accepted 5 0. Okay, the next item, sorry, the sorry. next item is the Galt Youth Commission annual report. And we have a couple members here to get that report. There is a clicker up there if you want to. Do you want to turn the side button? Is the side button on? Uh, the commissioners for this year are Alexa Morella Cuevas, our amazing chair, um, Genevieve Akers, vice chair, Isabella Sosa, secretary, star Enriquez, treasurer, Damaris Ramirez, publicity chair, Lauren Karen, uh, fundraising chair, Joshua Culler, sergeant of arms, Alexa Gold, council liaison, and me. I'm commissioner, but I'm just as fun. <laughs> okay. 
So the purpose of the GYC is outlined in our ordinance, which includes developing leadership skills and fulfilling goals that we set for ourselves to help improve the community and better the youth and encourage them to get participating. And inclusivity is very important in this. So we do projects such as like extravaganza we put on most recently and that was a good success. And we also work on skills such as public speaking within the commission. So this year we continued a project that we started a few years ago and this was the Adopting a Street project. The goal of this project is to maintain our city of Galt clean and encourage the entire community to do so. And this year we continued working along Lincoln Way, but we also explored new areas in partnership with the Beautification Committee. We were able to produce a PSA video and informational post that led to a wider turnout and this was also in partnership with the Beautification Committee and Cal Waste. Oftentimes after we were done with the cleaning, we got treated by committee members or nearby organizations. So we truly support, appreciate all the support that was demonstrated to us. And this year we definitely de um, worked on developing this project and making it more successful. So next up we have the Fashion Sew project which was held at Galt High for the career fair. And this was a project that we brought back and we had done in the past. And it was organized by us at the GYC along with former adult mentor Tracy Cross. And we reached out to the Galt Teen Center and Interact Club who helped put on this and serve as models. And the show focused on what to wear and what not to wear at an interview, so hopefully it would help some kids do good at their interviews. Um, we served our community in many ways. Uh, some of them are the Kevin Todd Memorial Run, and we even participated in the 4th of July parade afterwards. It was a lot of fun. Um, some other ones are Lightning of the Night, Spookishly Fun uh, Movie Night, and one of my favorites, Easter Star of Maganza. We had a lot of fun, and we got to interact with not only our members, but the members of the members of our city of Galt as well. And I just wanted to mention that we did do um, a raffle fundraiser at the Extravaganza, which was a great success. And we've had a lot of donors, so we'll talk about that later. It's okay. Besides our, uh, the team building we do do during our volunteer work and, you know, our meetings at the council, uh, there's, uh, there are other ways we do team building connections. Um, including our ice cream social. I think we had a, we introduced our new members there and it was a lot of fun and the ropes course retreat. And we have another retreat coming as well. And with this, what we do is we're gonna be spending the whole year together. So it gets us to bond and talk about our like, you know, our future goals and like things that we would like to do. So as part of something the Galt Youth Commission does for the youth, we give out two or three $250 scholarships that are offered to Estrelita, Galt High, and Liberty Ranch, but Estrelita didn't have any applicants this year, unfortunately. But we'd like to give a congratulations to the winners, Kira Schroeder and Hanyo Paula Haugri Torres <laughs> from Galt. <laughs> so we wish them the best of luck, and thank you for applying. Hanya Paula Horiguay Torres. <laughs> um, as far as skill building goes, we really learn skills that can be transferable to the real world situations and through projects like Adopting the Street and Easter Extravaganza and other projects we've done in the past and hopefully we'll do in the future. We definitely build the skills like leadership, personal strengths, team building, and responsibility. It's really important to learn responsibility because when you're taking on so many projects, you have to be really kept with your time and manage it well and uh, adult mentor Lisa Klotz who's sadly going away this year um, has given us lessons of leadership at the beginning of each meeting and those have really helped with all around and of course we would like to give a big thank you to our supporters this year we had our amazing adult mentors who really helped us grow as individuals but also as team members we had our um, city council representative Sean Farmer we had Lisa Klotz, Jessica and Matt Hill, Talon Harris, and Paige Lamson. And we just wanted to give a huge shout out to Lisa, who, as mentioned recently, is going to retire this year. And we've really appreciated her huge support for the Goyth Commission, as she's been with us since the commission started, I believe. And we, she's just been a big asset to our team. So we really are just grateful for her assistance, and we, hope, um, we wish her a really happy retirement. And of course this year, as mentioned earlier with our extravaganza event and other events, we had many supporters and new donors that I would just like to commemorate. Just to name a few, we had a lot of helpers. 
We had the Beautification Committee, Rotary, Cal Waste, the Galt Herald, the Coffee Shop Bakery, Tracy Cross, the A through Z Foundation, Barbara Welch, Roxanne Babcock, Kiwanis, Laheim, Brewsters, BMW Oak Grove, Galt High School, and Liberty Ranch High School. And of course, we had many, many others. So we really appreciate all the support that we got this year. And, and lastly, congratulations to our outgoing and incoming commissioners and our returning commissioners as well. So Alexis Morel Cuevas and Alexis Gold, who unfortunately isn't here with us today. And congratulations to our incoming commissioners, Kaysen Jones, My, uh, Mikey Brixey, Alexa Bullahan, and Karina Leon. Um, I'm, I'm super happy to see you guys come into our commission and I look forward to you know, getting to know all of you and working together with you. And I'm really sad to see you guys go, but Star Enriquez, Damaris Ramirez, and Isabella Sosa, they really helped me grow, get in, like, you know, just really helped me get into this commission and, you know, like, help me fit in and learn how to do many things commission that I've, and this was honestly a really great experience to be in this commission and I'm thankful for them. And, um, and I just want to, uh, congratulations and good luck with your future endeavors. It's actually Alexia Bullahan. It's really tricky because Sorry. we have okay. Alexa, Sorry. Alexis, Alexia this year. It's going to be tricky, but. Yeah. Are there any questions that we could answer? Any questions from council for the young ladies? No, I just want to thank you for getting involved. I, I, I can, it's quite clear that it was beneficial for you. And I'm curious, maybe, what do you do to uh, encourage other citizens to join? Well, a lot of times we make sure to post about things that we're doing. We also, I personally reach out to my friends and tell them about what I'm doing in the commission, but also inviting them to the events that we're going to be at. Do you guys want to answer? Um, like such as events as like Easter extravaganza, we like you know really we I really connected with a lot of like Galt like members of the city and like we try to uh, get them to join and like participate uh, in our future events using our like fundraising events and such. Uh, yeah, through the different um, clubs and organizations that are already present, like Rotary or the Teen Center or whatnot, they have teens in it or whatever, and we like say, hey, you should help out with this, or even NHS or Interact. I'm in NHS, and I usually tell them about what we're doing, so it's helpful for us to like tell different organizations that already have people in it, but also, like Alexa was saying, we post about it on our Instagram, and I think that helps because when you reach out to the parents, they usually tell their kids, and like, hey, you should join, you should join, and encourage them, so reaching out to the parents really helps encourage the kids. Are there any more questions? Uh, the only thing I would like to thank you for the outgoing commissioner and uh, welcome and congratulations all uh, newcomers. Yes, thank, thank you. you. I just have a comment. Um, yeah. Thank you for your service. Um, you know, last year and years past, we looked through the applications and many of you who apply for this commission are also doing probably a million and one other things in your life, right? Um, <laughs> kind of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And so um, to, to perform at the level that this commission performs um, with the help of the adult mentors, um, you guys are doing a great job. Appreciate your involvement and uh, continued success. Thank you very much. And thank you, City Council, for the opportunity to present today and be in the Goyth Commission. Are there, more, are there any more questions? Yeah, I just wanted to say, again, congratulations to the new mentors. I want to thank the adult mentors for... Uh, Ms. Lampson, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hill, and Mr. Harris for all um, volunteering. But I want to say what you guys do is really being a mentor to, uh, to your peers. And so I think that's important to uh, lead by example and get other people your age wanting to get involved in the community. So thank you for that. Thank you. Any more questions? Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, last, uh, last thing, um, I want to say thanks to Amy Sando for the air fire during the Easter Abraganza fundraiser. We had a big turnout, and thank you for, uh, thank you, um, all like the council members for always feeding us after anything we do. It's great. <laughs> Think of us when you're doing your budget this year. Yes. But just in case um, some of the council members like Vandenberg don't understand, we have we're only allowed ten commissioners, so that's what's in our charter. And, but this year we had 14 applicants and we had six open spots. So last year we couldn't fill it because of COVID or whatever. We didn't have enough applicants. We only had nine. And so this year we had an abundance of applicants. So 
the kids, it was really because the kids got the word out to their friends and all those public events that they did to encourage people to join. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Paige. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Moving on now to uh, item D, or public comment. Tina? Under Government Code Section 54954.3, members of the public may address the City Council on non-agenda items. The co public comment section is for the City Council to receive comments, except for brief responses to questions. No discussion or action may be taken on any item that is not listed on the agenda. Please limit comments to a maximum of five minutes. Due to the statewide emergency, public comments may also be submitted as noted above via the options listed on the first page of the agenda for providing live public comment or prior to the meeting via email to pubcom at cityofgalt.org by 4 p.m. on the day of the meeting, which will be distributed to city council, made part of the official minutes, and posted on the city's website prior to the meeting, but will not be read out loud. Okay, do we have any public comment this evening? We have one comment, Tracy Skinner. Good evening, um, I'm on the elementary school board, but I'm also here tonight just as a parent and community member. And since you guys are gonna be talking about your budget, I'm hoping that you can keep in mind, um, just in light of recent events, any funds that we could you know, be set aside for school safety, possibly more SRO officers, you know, I think would be really beneficial. And I know there's major R funds or general fund, but if you guys could keep that in mind when you're looking at your budget, it would be much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Do we have any additional public comment? No other public comment. Okay. Any, uh, we're still taking comment online too, right? Yes. Nothing it, online. Okay. The, okay. All right. Well, with that, we'll move on to item E. Reports by city council members on regional boards, commissions, and committees. We'll start with our vice mayor, Mr. Sandu. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I have to report a couple of things. On June 1st, uh, we have a STA uh, board meeting. Uh, we adopt a final STA budget fiscal year 2022-2023. It was a continue from the item uh, May 12, 2022. And we still have a vacancy on independent taxpayer oversight committee if somebody want to apply it. Uh, then the last thing on the STA meeting is we have an appointment of the Sacramento Transportation Authority Executive Director will assume the role in the new Executive Director on July 1st. His name is Kevin Busey. And I also tendered the South Sacramento Conservation Agency Joint Power Authority on May 23rd, 2022. Authority for continuation, authorizing for continuation of a remote teleconference meeting. Uh, we also adopt a resolution adopting the Sacramento Habitat Conservation Agency fiscal year 2022-2023 budget item. And that's all, uh, Mayor. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Council Member Papineau. Yeah, on uh, May 26th, we had the Sacramento Regional Air Quality District Board meeting uh, highlights were some of you may have seen a, a news story that our district was uh, graded down into the severe uh, non-attainment region uh, for uh, air quality districts. Um, and it was pointed out and there was a uh, response uh, printed in the local newspaper up in Sacramento. Um, that, that pointed out that the, the air didn't actually get worse, but these standards continued to get stricter. Um, and that's where that downgrading came. So, um, you know, the, the goal is still there, but that was worth pointing out. Um, and then we adopted a new budget, a $76.5 million budget. 
continuing to eat up reserves and try to find a way to keep up with the uh, state mandates. And then uh, another highlight uh, where some of that money has been going, um, there's been a pretty big push to uh, put clean air vehicles into the school districts and they, uh, the district put uh, $3.2 million into Twin Rivers School District and 1.28 into Dry Creek uh, to outfit them with uh, uh, clean air buses. And that was the highlights of that meeting. All right, thank you, sir. Council Member um, Vandenberg. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I attended the Groundwater Authority meeting. Uh, <clears throat> we now have a Citizens Advisory Committee. Uh, we're looking for long-term funding, both uh, grant and local agencies. Uh, we did not, unfortunately, uh, finalize our budget. And we're moving closer to uh, implementing positive action on groundwater recharging. That was the extent of it. Thank you. All right, Councilman Lozano. Yes, um, I had uh, a SACOG board meeting um, and a couple of transportation committee uh, meetings for SACOG uh, that I'll start with. Um, <clears throat> we also approved our final budget for next year, which is about $39.5 million. Um, most of that is passed through money from the state and federal government, uh, but there is a chunk that comes from our citizens here locally to help fund transportation projects. Um, we also um, went over a review and analysis of the citizens transportation tax that is um, slated to be on the November ballot and how it would really how it would affect as written today um, our ability to attain the 19% 19% greenhouse gas emission reduction and so more to come on that in, in the future um, I also happened to attend a uh, lunchtime meeting uh, with SACOG that had to do with um, you know, vehicles that are um, gas neutral, um, so electric, hydrogen, and um, I did hear about the air, com air quality uh, board and they're um, providing uh, funding for buses and things. So um, I passed uh, that link on to staff to take a look at to see if there might be something that we can do here locally uh, for charging stations or, you know, maybe even some neighborhood electric vehicle funding or, or something like that. So, um, and we have a uh, SACOG board meeting this Thursday, I'm sorry, on the 16th, so a week from this Thursday, and I'll report back out on that when, uh, at the next meeting. So, thanks. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, I myself didn't have any official meetings, but I did attend uh, Liberty Ranch High School. Uh, was invited to view the CTE program. Uh, Vice Mayor Sandu also attended, and we met with some uh, uh, state and regional leaders and people that were involved in that. Took a look at those programs, it's pretty phenomenal. So I appreciate the invite from uh, Superintendent Pettis. And with that, we will conclude our uh, reports from commissions and committees. Moving on to our consent calendar. It is recommended that items one through nine be acted upon simultaneously unless a separate discussion and or action is requested by a council member. Is there anything from council? So as I jumped the gun earlier, but for item six, I believe it is F6, uh, let my vote or let it, the record show that my vote will count for items one through five, seven, Eight and nine, but not six. Okay, Councilman, we'll, uh, we'll do them separately, I think. Do I have anything else from Council on the consent calendar? Okay, well with that, I will be looking for a motion to approve items one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, and nine, and they are the minutes of the regular meeting for May 17th, 2022. Item two is receiving file warrants for a period ending May 26th, 2022. Item three is a city council meeting of July 5th, 2022, and uh, the canceling of these meetings for uh, July 5th and August 2nd of 2022. Item four is the C Street Enhancement Project CIP 520F, Notice of Exemption from California Environmental Quality Act. Item five is gonna be the approval of Senate Bill 1 Annual Project List for Fiscal Year 22 through 23. Item seven is gonna be the Implement Storage 
implement shortage level two of the city's water shortage contingency plan. Item eight is the authorization to purchase the vacuum slash water truck in the amount of $743,356 plus additional sales tax and licensing fees. And item, uh, item nine, approval of the California Environmental Quality Act amendment or uh, addendum to the mitigated negative declaration for the city of Galt Live Oak pump station and the force main replacement project. Do I have a motion to approve those? Mr. Mayor, make sure we go to public comment. Oh, thank you, thank you, sir. Do you have any public comment on the consent calendar? No public comment. All right, thank you, thank you, Frank. Do I have a motion to approve those eight items? Move. Moved by Vice Mayor Sandu. Second. Seconded by Council Mayor Papineau. Can I have a roll call, please? Vice Mayor Sandu. Aye. Council Member Papineau. Aye. Council Member Vandenberg. Aye. Council Member Lozano. Aye. Mayor Farmer. Aye. Consent uh, items approved 4 0. Now move on to item six in the consent calendar, which is the Galt Landscape and Lighting District's engineer report, intention to levy and collect assessments for fiscal year 22 to 23 and set public hearings. Do I have a motion to approve that? So moved. Moved by Councilman Lozano. Second. Uh, second by Vice Mayor Sandu. Can I have a roll call, please? Vice Mayor Sandu. Aye. Council Member Papineau. Aye. Council Member Lozano. Aye. Mayor Farmer. Aye. Item approved 4-0. I want to make a correction. The first items were approved 5-0. Correct. Right. I made a mistake and said 4. Apologize for that. All right. Moving on to item G, scheduled matters, notice of public hearing. Do we have any this evening? No public hearings. All right. Moving on to item H, our regular calendar. A couple, uh, three items. First one's going to be from the city manager's office is the proposed fiscal year 22 to 23 and the 23 to 24 budget study session. Mr. Hines. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So we're gonna cover um, budget items with item H1 and then we'll come back and talk a little bit about uh, uh, more aspects of the budget with item H3. So um, tonight is essentially a open forum for council to ask any follow-up questions, resolve any um, uh, lingering issues and to give us some uh, sanguine direction on the resolution that we'll be bringing back to you on Tuesday, June 21st. Um, and so I'll be looking for just some input and direction on the budget. But meanwhile, per, uh, before we get into the budget discussion, there are just some follow-up items that I would like to discuss with you uh, regarding the budget, and uh, these uh, bore out of the results of some conversations that I have with the members and with the public. So, Tina, can you go to uh, the final budget items, please? All righty. So the first thing I wanted to present to the council and to the public, and go ahead, next slide, please. Um, the results of the Get Involved Galt uh, Community Survey that's going on right now. We so far have received 501 survey responses and just letting folks know that you know, the big items are retaining an attractive quali uh, attracting qualified police officers, uh, maintaining 911 emergency response, uh, preventing property crimes, um, uh, protecting clean local drinking water sources, and so these are sort of the items that we're testing right now. Wanted council and the public to see how all of them are faring. All of them are pretty strong. And um, I wanted to also let the public know that these um, preferences, these, these um, items are also built into the biennial budget. And so all of these items are being funded um, in one way or another. So I wanted council to see that. Uh, next slide, please. You can go to the next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Thank you. And so the other is issue that I wanted to put before council is the issue with the commissions and committees. And so there are three commissions and committees that typically uh, have requested funding. Uh, the Beautification Committee last received funding during the 2018-2020 fiscal year totaling $3,340. In 2014-16, they were 
uh, provided with 3,150. Um, COVID happened during the years 2021, and so they were uh, not provided funding during that time. The current revenue balance or the current revenues that the committee has access to is zero. The next group is the uh, Commission on Aging. Last received funding for 2018 through 2020, totaling $9,100. In 2015, 2016, they receive um, um, uh, uh, $1,700 or $1,800. And the current revenue balance that the Commission has access to is $2,099. Uh, next slide, please. And then there's the Galt Youth, Com Youth Commission, who we just uh, saw. And they last received funding for 2018-2020, totaling 5000 over that biennial year. Uh, prior to that, they received uh, 2500 during the 2016-17 fiscal year. Um, their current revenue balance, and a lot of this has to do with their fundraising activity, is $7,420. So the question I have for council is, do you, the Commission on Aging has approached council with a budget um, that um, allows them to do certain programmatic functions and allows them to, it is requesting additional city funding and um, they would use that um, along with the grant funding that they have leveraged for various functions. My question to council is, do you want me to reach out to the Youth Commission and the Beautification Committee and ask them to submit a budget request as well? Council? I had one question back to the Commission on Aging. They had or have grant funding coming from SMUD? Oh. Yes, they have grant funding coming in, and I think Director Solis can elaborate on that. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Yes, uh, they received a uh, $3,500 a year for three years uh, from SMUD starting this fiscal year. So in July, they'll get another $3,500. We've received the first installment. Um, so that's not reflected in the 2099 that they currently have? No. In the bank. No. No. So I did not reflect any of their current budget requests in the numbers that you see before them because it is still a request. Right. Yeah. What, what was the request that they asked for? No, it was more than that. It was, forget. I, I believe it was closer to $5,000 is what they were asking for. If I, I don't have that number exact, right. uh, but I believe it was in that $5,000 uh, range because I knew the SMUD SMUD grant would cover the things that they wanted to do, and that's where we felt that um, it was more appropriate. I just asked because if they have 2,000 and, <clears throat> and they're going to get 3,500 more, that would be 55. So if they have a, if, if their needs are 5,000, um, I'm just curious why they would have asked for budget allocation um, unless it was not five. I don't know. I, I, as I remember, the, the meeting and the request was that they wanted us to consider um, the $5,000 outside of their um, grant opportunity. And so um, the, the money that would have, um, they were requesting uh, would set aside the $3,500 per year for three years. Personally, I would look forward to uh, supporting the Commission on Aging, but it, I think it would be nice if we actually had a monetary value to vote on instead of just a random, an unknown value. Well, the question that I'm putting before the Council is, the Commission appeared before the Council about a month ago, and with a, with a list of items that they wanted funding and a funding request. And so they essentially have placed that in front of Council for their consideration. My question to council is, do you want me to give me, do you want me to give the same opportunity to the beautification committee and the youth commission? So, it, so we have some equity to the equation. I, I think, I think I would support, I, in all fairness, we would, we should, um, I would be as supportive of doing some sort of baseline number for all the commissions. I, I, I think, you know, like for example, the, the youth commission, you know, they have the ability to really get out there and fundraise. Um, 
with the beautification, and not to say that these commissions couldn't do something, but it's less likely that maybe beautification or commission or AG would fundraise just based on his, history, um, whereas Youth Commission's more active in that. But I think that they would all be deserving of some sort of baseline. I'm, I'm looking at numbers. Looks like the Galt Youth Commission was given 2,500 in uh, one in previous years, and then there was uh, the beautification was given 3,000, and the commission is given 17. So I mean, I'm thinking maybe like a medi like some kind of medium in there. I, I would I would be supportive of like maybe we could see if we could give each committee and commission like 2,500 or something, but unless they don't ask for it. I, but again, I don't know. That's just my initial thoughts. I'd like to hear from the rest of council. I'd, I'd like to see, uh, if they desire to put in a request, I'd like to see it uh, come with somewhat of a line item and a justification for the amount that they uh, would request. Great. Is that, isn't that typically how it's done? Uh, that's, that's typically how it's done. However, uh, the, the, the commission submitted a, a, um, uh, a memo that it takes more of the form of talking points, and it's not really a budget proposal. Um, I did find the uh, talking points. They, they were asking for a total of $6,150 outside of the grant funding that they received. And um, there it was for a number of items, uh, quarterly lunches, uh, fundraising activities, uh, there, there's just a number of items in here. And I would prefer, just my preference, is that if there's a budget submission or a budget request that comes, for, that comes before the council, that that be clear and concise and consistent amongst the commissions and committees. And that way, you know, everything is looked at in a sort of an apples to apples format. And so that's the question I'm asking. I, I agree with you and I agree with Mr. Pompanow as well. The uh, Commission on Aging came and gave a passionate plea of why and what they want to use the money for so I would be supportive of that but we have not heard that from the other two items so just want some kind of justification for spending. Could we, could we, sorry go ahead. And then same thing I'm going to piggyback uh, Mr. Uh, better work because if some any any organization need anything they have to uh, address they have to bring the request and I also on the, the agree with the mayor you know these organizations may be very close whatever we can to 2,000 between 3,000 whatever we can afford in a budget okay and uh, Mr. Mayor, um, if I may, um, I just got word from the city clerk, who's my, my, my historian, that apparently during the rough times uh, that we had financially, the, uh, the ability for the commissions to come before council was somewhat um, deferred uh, because we were going through tough financial times. And so my question to you all is, do we want to reinstate that practice but again, have a little more clarity and make sure that the budget submissions are uh, pristine, so to speak. Yeah, I, I, I think obviously they, they have to present what they're come with, come with the budget and it has to be very, you know, uh, it has to be structured and say what they're going to use the money for and so on. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tina, I think there wasn't like a certain amount, there might have been like a cap but different commissions came and asked for different monies, right? Yes, they were given an opportunity around April or May of each year to bring their proposals forward, submit it to city council. City council right. either gave the amount they requested, a portion of it, whatever they felt was right. Right, so if we did something like that, but maybe, was there a cap, do you remember? Um, I believe there was, it was capped at 10,000 maybe. Well. I don't think they're ever going to ask for that much. I know, but that was what I, I think. In the past. I would I would be supportive of them of a, bringing that program back, but with some sort of reasonable cap. I think. I mean, based maybe historically, we can figure out what the cap should be, um, you know, and then maybe go on that. Any, just to be fair, but that's just my input. I I would recommend just throwing a number out there, uh, maybe four thousand per committee. Um. Well, I mean, looking historically, I mean, uh, I mean, what were the numbers that were? It's hard because we only got six, yeah. well, 16 and 17 of some of these, yeah. Right. Um, 
I'm just looking for a place to start. Yeah. And then as the year goes on and if there's a need from the commissions and committees, council always has the ability to provide more funding to them as long as well. It looks like last time funding was given to the youth commission in, in 2018, it was five grand. Mm -hmm. Commission on aging last received nine, which was pretty high. And then the beautification got 3,300. I think five is a happy medium. I mean, okay. but that's just me. I think five is an even number. I, I, it's probably very likely that you're, you're not going to get the commission's asked for all that. I, I, you know, a lot of them are going to be lower, so I don't foresee us having to give out five to all the commissions. Okay. But that's just me. I'm, other people... Um, Council? Just looking for some sort of informal consensus so I can give them some general direction. I think five is fine. I'm very close. Okay. And they and I will make sure that they all know that you have to justify. Yeah. If you ask for five, we're going to we need you to justify that. Well, I could support that. If it's if it's justified, I don't want to just pass it out willy nilly. Well, I mean justified meaning that they present a budget saying what they're gonna do it, not not I just want to be clear on what the word justifies means. It's a subjective term. Justified means that the for for every uh, dollar that's being spent, we need to know what project, what outcome, um, and the purpose of of the spending. Because these 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 commissions and these three commissions and committees are in, are intended to enhance um, life here in Galt, and so we need to we need to understand how each part of this budget request improves the quality of life at Galt and carries on the mission of these committees. And thirdly, how does that allow that commission or committee to interface with the public to bring feedback back to the council? Because they, they're all advisory committees to the council. So that's their primary purpose. And so those are the three items that I'm looking for. How does it help the citizens of Galt? How does it carry on their mission? And, and so those are the things that we'll be looking at. And those are the sort of the general areas of justification. And, and so it, it won't be a, um, um, y you know, a very intense process. It, it just needs to pass those three sort of tests. No, right, because, and they'll and they'll mm -hmm. they'll come forward to council, and if council has concerns and saying, you know, that item doesn't sound like that's really exactly they, right, so they'll be up to council discretion to approve those budgets. Yeah, brought forward. yeah. So. Oh yeah, I just want to make sure that I, that we present a, a product to you all that that's clearly stated, and that the justification is also clearly stated, given those three parameters that I just laid out to you. Any concerns? Uh, are we fine with what Mr. Hines? Okay. Okay. So generally a five thousand dollar cap, those three parameters, and so we'll get word out to the com commissions and committees. And given the tight time frame, we will also help them, um, you know, put their proposals together. Um, and and uh, Clark Hubert, if you could go to the next slide, please. So another item that we had um, a previous discussion about was upgrading our Christmas tree lights. And we had not built this into the budget because it was still an item for a discussion. But I, my thinking is, my thinking, well, sorry, my thinking is that we still are, we still have access to one-time ARPA dollars. And clearly there was a need or a desire for an upgrade in our Christmas decorations uh, that we um, heard um, with the last um, uh, last holiday, and so um, Armando Solis and his uh, team um, provided uh, a number of options. And uh, Director Solis, do you want to go through the slides? Yeah, you don't mind. It's no problem. A little easier for me to explain. Sure. So uh, we have four areas that we've covered. Uh, the first one is the tree. We've had a lot of comments on the tree. This isn't exactly what we would be purchasing, but it's just a picture of an idea. Uh, the total was $26,000 for lights, uh, decorations, et cetera, for that. Um, if you go to the next slide, uh, we have those uh, for the traffic lights. We have the, the old um, our, uh, nut, nutcrackers, the soldiers up there that are really trashed and I think are older than my son, who's 28. And so this would replace those at uh, this intersection, C in Lincoln, and A in Lincoln. 
Uh, that's a cost of eleven thousand dollars. So for twelve of them, you guys go. Okay. Uh, now this Christmas tree uh, lighting would uh, be added to this area here. We'd put that at uh, on C Street, right at that little Y here. It's right in front of the building next to the Taunton Memorial. That's thirteen thousand, and then this would be placed. Uh, at Shibola Hills, at Shibola and Lincoln, we would remove the, the candle light sticks that, that were up there that people keep complaining about uh, that are tacky. So we would do a big area right there on Shibola Hills as they enter. So we'd hit both entrances into downtown, Lincoln and Shibola and C Street and Civic. So that's the total, depending on if you pick all four or if you can pick and choose which ones you'd like to have. Council, uh, this is with ARPA funds. That's the recommendation, sir. Okay, and then I just want to double check. Be mm -hmm. clear. And then, so this would be the end of those uh, candles. We would get rid of everything we have now. Okay, I, I fully support that. Yeah, those are way past due. About twenty years past due. Exactly. I agree. I'm going to put my citizen's hat on right now and just ask a couple <laughs> questions that I think the public's probably thinking, and I know the answers to some of these, but. Talk, talk to me about the Christmas tree lighting. Why, why 26,000 in lights? Can you explain why people are thinking regular, they're thinking, well, Christmas lights, you don't cost that much. Yeah. Can you explain Every, that? Everything's com commercial grade. It isn't, we're not going down to Walmart and picking up a bulb. These are actually probably about four to six inches, depending on um, the price list that he came up. Uh, the lights are going to be um, high grade. Um, I don't have that list in front of me, but everything's basically going to be commercial grade. And I was going to ask you what you think the life expectancy of this stuff is. I know that's subjective, but um, I know that we got like what 30, 30 years out of our old stuff. <laughs> Not we uh, we did some. I think about eight years ago we added some, but I, I let me see. I'm going to retire soon, so at least five years Stop. we'll get out of that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we'll uh, there'll be none of that. <laughs> I honestly, I, I think if we take care of it and we we really do. Um, can easily go 10, 15 years without a problem, should. Especially with the LED lighting versus some of the stuff that they had in prior years. Well, I know as we sit up here and we talk about a lot of stuff with, with money and we, you know, we obviously have to um, prioritize things. Uh, this kind of stuff mm, to some may not seem very important and, and I, I would agree that there's obviously lots of things we're gonna talk about tonight that are more important than this. But I think, um, you know, this is a quality of life issue. I think, you know, if we just said, let's just not have any fun or do anything like this in town anymore, then I think that would be a big downer on the community. Um, I do like the fact that it's being presented by ARPA money, because to me, that's not coming out of our general fund dollars. I know we have like two, wait, wait, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Hines, so this would come out of the two million and some odd change. That is correct, a, sir. Yes. Need, okay. Um, and this is, so this one-time money, um, this is not pouring concrete as I refer to it. It's an ongoing expense. This is a one-time expense. At least one time for a few years. At least. So, I mean, if the council supports it as a whole, then I would support it. You know, uh, we've talked about trying to do stuff that, um, you know, we can put out and people can see and appreciate and beautify the city. Some of our, with the ARPA things, a lot of it's uh, restricted and what we can and can't do, but uh, I think given that this is coming from ARPA and the pandemic response policies, uh, tried to squelch two Christmases. Um, I have no problem with using that pandemic money to uh, boost Christmas a little bit for the community. So that'd be it. I'd support it. Any other council have comments? Yeah, I would support on that. Uh, uh, this is clear, the $80,000 you can use these uh, commercial grade, right? So it can be a long lasting. Yes, that uh, quote is through uh, Decolite, um, a company that we've purchased from before. So those are quotes that we did receive from them. Thank you, and I will support that. Armando, off the top of your head, how, have how many times or how long ago do you think you guys came and asked to upgrade these decorations and stuff? Have you ever done that before? We have. 
Steve Rudolph was the interim city manager, and he's the last one who approved any money for it. Okay. Well, there's any further uh, comments from council? I think we've done hearing that part of the presentation. All right. Thank you, sir. Very good. Very good. Thank you. I will take that as a consensus, and we will be sure to add that into the uh, into the ARPA budget when we bring the budget back to you all on the 21st. And um, Mr. Mayor, uh, that concludes this portion of the um, uh, the PowerPoint that I have. I do have some slides related to item H3, which we'll get into when we get into that. So um, I'm going to uh, conclude this now and, um, and basically ask council, are there any questions uh, regarding the other parts of the budget, um, any of the issues in the other 27 funds that you feel strongly about that you want to give me direction on, um, any of the requests. Um, and so all the staff is here uh, to... Uh, Can we see, Could we? do we have any public comment on the budget? I'd like to hear if there's any comment before... No public comment. Okay. All right. Um, council, does anybody... Want to bring anything up particular or? I do, but can you give me like a minute? Sure. I'm going to find it in my notes. So I'll, I'll burn a minute for you. Uh, on the request I had for uh, unfilled positions, now correct me if I'm wrong, I, I probably should have brought it up, but I thought I'd had a minute. Uh, for the accounting position, that would be over, over and above uh, previous historical highs of 12, right? That would be a 13th yes. position? Yes. Yes. And that, that, um, the monies for that position are in this budget when we're talking about revenue totals. Yes. Or not revenues, but expense uh, the expenditure totals. totals, yes. So I would like to see that position removed permanently. I don't know, Mr. Splendario, I don't know how that would have to sound, or I guess I should ask if I have support from the council. Meaning, because meaning the position itself, meaning that you are proposing not to fund that position. The position itself exists, but it is not funded. So Well that's that's why I asked for clarification. Is it right. is it funded in the, the upcoming budget? It is in the funded it is funded in the upcoming budget, yes. So <laughs> it, if, right if that now, position is removed, we right. have we have more money to work with. Yes. That's what I'm proposing. So how would that sound, Mr. Spendario, if Yeah, I think you just phrased it the way it it needed to be phrased. Does that make sense to my fellow council members? Uh, are, so your concern, Mr. Vandenberg, is that uh, so the, the, the position was approved, was created, but it wasn't funded. So by doing that, the fund, the money is allocated, but it's just not funded. So like when, when vacant positions, every year when we have vacant positions, that actually a position that exists, if it's vacant, the money is still earmarked in the budget for that. It's just not put, it's not paid for the, is that correct? Right. Right. So I think, I think what, I think what Mr. Vandenberg is trying to say is you, you are not just talking about not funding the position. You're trying to free up that money from the budget. Yeah, that's why I wanted clarification. I don't understand. I said, yeah, I, I don't okay. know what that. Is. So that so that 114,000 in the current year and 114,000 in the budget year, are built into the long-term financial plan expenditures. And so that surplus that you see at the bottom of those two years would grow if funding is removed for that position. However, I should at least leave you with this, this thought, that the number of government accounting standards and the pressure on your finance team um, are mounting. Um, uh, Director Boring, how many applications do we have for the accounting manager right now? We've received three so far. Okay, and how long has it been open? Um, close to a month. Okay, so I've got folks in finance that are working out of class. So even though those dollars will be removed from the new budget, finance's budget will run over because I've got folks working out of class. So. I'm just leaving you with that thought. But That's council correct. member, I understand. Uh, but just understand in the mid-year, I will most likely come back here and ask you for an augmentation in finances budget. Okay? I'm just right. making sure you have all the information before you kind of give me a general consensus as to 
which way you want me to go. As I always say, the best decisions are made with the most information. Yes. Uh, I see, uh, Mr. I, go ahead. I was going to go. Good. No, you're not done. Well, I, I, just considering our negotiations and you know how tight it is the budget, we're constantly trying to fill out a 10 gallon bucket with nine gallons. So mm -hmm. this is the way to give us a half a gallon. Go ahead, Mayor. I was going to say, I see that Mr. Boring was going to say, so I was going to let the Vice Mayor go first, and then Mr. Boring, you've had a comment. Yeah, you know, on this uh, senior accountant position, uh, I do have a concern. The reason a couple of months ago, majority of the council, they don't fund that position. At that position coming back after two months, I don't think so anything changed my mind or maybe some other council members. It may be after a year is a different story, but I'm sorry, two months we were whole council, and not, not the whole, majority of the council is not, and this position was not funded. And bringing back that position to consider a council, I'm, uh, I'm not interested on that. Mr. Boring. I, I just wanted to add, like uh, the city manager mentioned, uh, staff working out of class. Um, so if it were removed from the budget, we would still need to address that because we will have staff working out or outside of class. So we would have to uh, figure out how to address that issue. Um, I, I think, I mean, I just, I would only like to share just my thoughts from when we talked about this before. It's, um, I mean, you, you, I think the Mr. Hines in the finance department laid out a pretty, uh, you know, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, uh, a pretty clear, you know, they're trying to justify it. Um, it was just, we had some things that they needed to take care of. Um, and so I understood those, those, uh, those reasons. Um, personally, back then, I, I just, my thoughts would be that we went from a finance department that, you know, we've, I recently looked at a document which was presented at our, my request, and I think all of us were given it, where it showed, you know, the, the positions of the finance department pre-pandemic through, actually probably pre my role in council, probably from 17, I think it was, and through, and I mean, our finance department is basically staffed at the at the peak of what it was. Well, except for the re recent uh, resignation or of one of, of um, whatever, I forget her position was recently, um, Ms. Nguyen, but, uh, but we were at the maximum. So we haven't even been at that many people since I don't know, pre-2017 or something. So um, I think, you know, the council said at that time, we, we came back and there was a bunch of frozen positions that um, three of us here had done during the budget cuts of 18 or 19, and we, we put all those back in place. And so this was gonna go over and above that. And I think that was, there was just some concern at that point about going above and doing, like again, I referred to, when I make a reference to pouring concrete, these are like things, you know, positions which are ongoing. These are not one time. This isn't buying Christmas lights. This isn't buying a, a patrol car and PD or something. These are these are things that are ongoing expenses. You you create those. They come with they come with strings attached. They come with purrs. They come with whatever. So, you don't just the reason they call it that is because you don't take them back. It's not easy to take them back. So, I, I'm very cautious about things like that because we again we we have the landscape thing. Um, we were presented with some landscape options recently about what it would take to bring landscape, and we kind of talked about it, and then we didn't do anything about it yet. And so I, I just, I feel like, you know, the finance department, we've, 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 you know, we did some positions there, and now we're at a point where I'm feeling that there's other things that I would like to see if we're going to be like committing money for long term outside of this position. Um, so, I mean, I understand what Councilman Vandenberg's saying. I also understand what staff's saying with the need for the position. But, I mean, I just had a, you know, a school board member talking about how we want, you know, we want to see more SROs. As Chief Kalinowski knows, I've been asked, you know, I've been wanting to see another SRO for a while. And I'm, you know, and I know that's something that we could possibly get at some point. But these are things from the community that, that are asked for. And so, um, I just... Think 114 grand could maybe be served somewhere else right now a little better, at least for now, before we get these other issues taken care of. And that's just my two cents right now. We we do have public comment now. Do okay. you want to hear it? Um, go ahead. Does that find us want to speak before a public comment? Or? Uh, I can. Oh, I'm sorry. I can hold off. Okay. Public. Okay. That's fine. 
All right. Is it uh, in the room or on the phone? On the phone. Okay. Mr. Sauter, can you hear us? Jerry Sauter. Oh, can you hear me? Go ahead. Can you hear? Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Council, for the opportunity to speak. Jerry Sauter, Galt resident. Um, thank you to the staff and, and everyone for the, the budget proposals. I just wanted to kind of give the citizen perspective um, as you're reviewing budget. Appreciate the council, um, you know, trying to, to free up money for, for, for things and also balance the needs of, of the recommendations of city staff. But I know we have lots of, of residents that are concerned about some of the, you know, public facilities within the city and especially, uh, uh, you know, following some of the social media things and, and also uh, just driving by myself, the condition of some of our uh, landscaping and um, some of our public parks as far as the maintenance there. So, uh, you know, I just think that you know, those kind of things are like gas prices. They're the very obvious uh, thing. So as, as, as citizens are hearing the council deliberate and, and have staff recommendations on budget, you know, we're thinking about how do the parks look? What's the condition of our roads? What's the condition of our public facilities? Um, and so just always want to ensure that those are taken into consideration. And I just want to add, that's kind of why I'm always a little leery about some of the the grant money we spend on improvements like the the c street project etc because we're we're getting money to get stuff that we have to take care of and then we get told the citizens oh well there's not as much money as we'd anticipated for that or that landscape and lighting district doesn't cover that we don't have the money in the general fund so um, i just want to make sure that we're cognizant of, of taking care of our of our public facilities as a priority, as well as some of the other things the citizens responded to on the survey. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sauter. Mr. Papineau, you. So, you know, with regard to that position, and I'll kind of, I, I'm going to restate you know, what I said when we discussed it before. Um, to be blunt, um, our finance department leading up to 2018 um, drove us into that hole, frankly. Um, we have uh, righted the ship. We brought in a city manager, director with the expertise. We've hired a consultant who laid out how we should be doing it. Through all that, we have a appreciable surplus not enough to cover the laundry list of things that we need to do but they got us in the right place and i know we want to with all urgency you know fix the landscapes and and get all that stuff done but in my view this is the infrastructure that keeps us on the road to be able to fund all that stuff so you know i don't have a problem with this investment in the infrastructure to uh, keep us getting more and more uh, financially healthy so that we can uh, do all these things. You know, they're, and frankly, they're, you know, like uh, Councilmember Vandenberg said, you, you know, uh, we overturn every stone, and I think that these guys have done a phenomenal job of uh, finding, uh, finding ways to, to stretch our dollars. So. Um, you know, I don't have a problem with uh, with certainly leaving the position in there, and a step further, I don't have a problem with funding it. Um, I, I won't take up too much time because I've stated this in the last the last time we discussed it. Um, I, I would agree that um, finance department and, and Everyone there is working their their uh, their very best and has done a, a great job here recently and getting th some things turned around. Um, one of the things that hasn't been pointed out yet is that not only was there um, some professional judgment used by our city manager uh, in the finance department, 
but certainly uh, an outside consultant was intentionally brought in to look at that to see that that was um, the appropriate way to move forward. But I want to bring everybody back to the last at least three independent consultants reports. There were some things in there that were very bothersome for me, and I, and I know the rest of the councils we de deliberated about it for for a while. And a couple of those things were um, easily resolved uh, after the fact. And I, you know, one of my roles here is to ensure that I watch the public money and ensure that we're keeping up on our checkbook and making sure that that's balanced monthly or, or, or whatever other rules are out there uh, that the, that the uh, standards set forth. Um, but our consultant said, and our auditor said both, you need a position in place, the one we're talking about, to ensure that those things don't happen again. And I'll just remind everyone, our finance department is going to be working with the auditor here in about 30 days, beginning the process for our auditing our books for next year. Every year that I've sat on this council, we've had something to correct in that, in that, um, that report. And, and I believe that part of that is, um, well, let me just put, put it this way. I believe that if we have this position in place as stated by staff, some of those errors won't be made. And I believe it's a small investment to ensure public trust that we're doing the right thing with the money. Um, so I, I don't have a problem supporting the position. Um, I would hope that uh, the larger issue, and I won't belabor this point, but the larger issue is that we can recruit for it. Um, and recruit for any of our positions, because that is another issue we have. So I will leave it at that. Um, and uh, I don't, I, it's kind of vague staff direction, but <laughs> um, you know, it's, it, it's something we need to be cognizant of uh, moving forward. Well said. Um, I think everybody's expressed their opinion. Uh, as far as I can read it, it's uh, three to two to, uh, remove this position is is that what am i reading the council correctly well i want to circle back to kevin and, and um sorry councilman papano and councilman zano's comments and, and i and i i acknowledge what they're saying and um but I, I just want to say again that you know we you know mr Hines came in and and pretty much had the entire finance department was was uh you know hired a bunch of new people and did what was needed to be done. We're two years in now, um, and what I what I when I say two years in, I mean we're two years in, and we still have not fixed the root problem of what of what we were dealing with in eighteen. Um, and I keep hearing this referral to like you know previous finance departments got in, got us into this mess and got us into that. And I just want to state that I just get a little confused sometimes because I hear comments about that, which I agree with. But then I also hear comments that we weren't in such a financial mess as we were made out to be. So I keep hearing conflicting uh, statements made. But what I would like to say with this position is, look, I, I, you know, we, we brought back all the positions that we froze. And we have the finance department, again, at, at the highest level that it's been. And we're asking for additional positions. But yet we have yet to even address, I mean, we have some ideas being floated around, but we have yet to address the Parks and Rec um, budgetary issues and the lighting and landscape budgetary issues and when I know we're stewards of the of city dollars and we want to make sure that and what and, and, and you guys are right but what I see here is and this is what I feel like I, get, I hear from from the people in the public whose money this is that we spend is that you know they're asking for things like you know we want to see weeds get sprayed and we want to see parks be back to a level that we we saw before we want to see you know better they want to see additional traffic enforcement they want to see uh you know uh you know things like the like i mentioned before like the school resource officer these are things that all could be done with that same money i i, I mean i think we need to you know what i see is government wanting to spend more money on itself instead of spending money where the public's asking for it I mean, I'm going to refer to this survey that was just showed to us. 
And again, I mentioned this the other day, but this survey, I can touch on several things in here that, that, um, that are mentioned in there, and, and I think that I would rather see the money. Heck, I'd rather see that 114 grand be put into the police department budget and, and 50,000 of that help fund half of a school resource officer and see if the school district would fund the rest or, or take the, uh, you know, and then the other 50 go somewhere else. That, that's just my opinion. So for me, circling back again, the other thing that's really bothersome too is when something comes to the council and we all have our deliberations in the council, and the council doesn't always agree. We, clearly, we're in one of those right now, but when the council makes a decision and we say this is what, we're gonna, this is what we want, this is what we do, I don't like the fact when something comes back two weeks later and they ask for it again, and then we kind of talk about it, and then it, it comes back again a third time. I mean, we, we were clear that we didn't want the, the, the measure funded. I know Mr. Vandenberg's asking for something a little different, but for me, I just have a problem with the fact that we're even back here talking about it. It's like if mom says no, we go to dad, and we just keep going back and forth. I mean, it's a no for me. I'm not funding that position tonight. I'm sorry. I would like to see other monies put to more important things. If we can take care of those things, I would be more than happy to support that position come midterm or come you know, March or February, whenever we're going to revisit this. But for now, I, I just I would like to see some other things that the community is asking for. And so I think I can answer your first question there real quick um, about the that our finance department made a mess and on the other hand we weren't as bad as we thought and that's because our finance department didn't know what we had and I think if they had and we've been functioning at the level that we're functioning at now you probably wouldn't have had to make all those cuts in 18 so I think you know that those two things, in, in my view, can be true, um, you know. And, I, and again, I think that uh, taking care of our finance department allows us to take care of uh, all of the other things. Not doing it uh, as a trickle effect and uh, doesn't allow us to take care of those things. So I have a consensus of three to two to remove the position. Okay, any other issues? Thank you all for your comments. Um, any other issue? Oh, we have public comment. We have one more public comment online. If you're there, state your name and speak. Scott from, Scott from Davis Cannabis, can you unmute your line? Hmm. If you're there, Mr. Robinson, speak. Do you still want to make public comment? You want to come back to him? Okay, why don't we move on? Um, any, any other items? Uh, yeah, Mr. Hines, I, I, I wanted to touch a, a, a little bit, a, a bit again on the, on the um, since we are talking about budget and we're forecasting in, and I've, I've seen the budgets that PD presented and that were presented on behalf of Measure R, and um, I, I like a lot of what's in there. Well, most of what's in there, I don't have any problem with it. I, I see there's a lot of good uh, resources in there, a lot of good, um, uh, um, yeah, I guess resources. We have several things that have been asked for. I, I, just, I just would like to, again, to, to, to see if we could, I mean, I, I've been approached by school board members that are asking about, you know, better school safety. And, and again, it circles me back to something I've been asking for for three years is additional, you know, an additional measure R officer. Um, I mean, it's a split, it's a split position. So it's not very expensive for the city. It's 50 grand. It's a lot, but it's not a hundred. I would really like to see if that's not something we could try to work into our budget right now. I would at least like to see it in some sort of forecast for the for the for the twenty three twenty four. I mean, um, I just want some sort of end game for that when we could possibly do that. And I know that the chief, you know, is chief. You're given a lot of discretion by the city manager to 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 manage your department, and I have the most respect for that. But I also think I have a duty as a council member to push forward things I hear from the community and especially from elected officials. Um, on, on both school boards I've heard from uh, with, this, with this request. And so here I am, and I, I would like to, to have a discussion about that. The SRO is funded 100% out of Measure R, correct? 
It is split, I understand, between the city and the school district, but right. Steve Kalinowski will give us the background. Right, that was my understanding, but I meant just for our budget, we would, it wouldn't come out of the general fund, it would be funded out of Measure R, that portion of it. Yeah, so currently we have two SRO positions, and when the Measure R um, position was approved by the voters, one of those positions was solely funded by Measure R. In that position, uh, there's no reimbursable. The second position, which is um, the second SRO, is funded by Measure R, and then there's a revenue in the Measure R budget accounting for what the school district um, pays. Um, for that second position, but it's important for me to say the following. I still have two frozen police officer positions and a frozen dispatcher position to the tune of about 400000 in the general fund that we need to address because that fills positions like the second traffic officer and the fourth officer on swing shift and other things that are important for overall um, safety in the community, and we'll continue to work for that. Um, including those two frozen officer positions, I have five vacant positions. So we're getting there, but we'll see where we land over the next 60 or 90 days, whether that traction will stay or not. Um, so if we added um, another SRO position, that's gonna get in line behind um, the need to staff baseline patrol activities and uh, make sure that I don't have vacant positions just burning over time to fill a position. So it is a little bit of a um, balancing act. And sometimes we have filled positions, but I have long-term vacancies. We have one of those currently with Capri and we could have others. So I could have the positions in play, but I lose two or three bodies at a time. That takes a hit. And so you've seen that with the traffic enforcement component that people have called for, and we're getting close to being able to have some traction on that. Um, I think we just need to be methodical in the approach, and I don't discount the concerns about school safety because they are real concerns. Um, and the school district has a responsibility for school safety and hardening their facilities and paying those bills. I'm not so sure that the city is always responsible for the full burden of that. And so I think we need to look closely on if the city's gonna expend X dollars in the future, you know, is that a good use of, as some have suggested, as of our resources, and it might be, but we need to evaluate to make sure that we get something out of that deal. Um, and that we, I have sustainment in it, because it's not gonna do us any good if, if I have two, five, or seven SROs, but I don't have the staffing that sticks because I lose people where I only still only have two SROs. I'm not advocating either way. I, I believe school safety is very important. The mayor's correct about that, but I, I think there's more global conversation about how we deliver safety in the community and make sure that we have all those holes filled. And, and just, just to be, you know, devil's or full view, uh, having two SROs in city of Galt is like roughly a percentage, how much higher than the average city? Um, I don't know that I can give you a percentage higher than the average city. Um, I live in Brentwood. I believe they have three SROs in the city, 60 something thousand people. So um, I think it's all based on priorities as being articulated here and um, ability to fill positions and so on. So number of high schools in the community, things like that. So, um, Well, I, yeah. I appreciate I appreciate Chief, and and I, and I know and I no way want to indicate that I would put an SRO position in front of an, a patrol position. I was just simply asking that you know in our forecast out that we could, because I know with Measure R it's it's unique for those of you that are watching and don't know. I mean, it would have to come before the council. Measure R is very specific. It's a general tax, you know, general specific tax, special tax measure. So the only latitude that we have to do is the council could at any time say we want to add a you know patrol or at a SRO or whatever and we could we could we could do that within measure R and I know measure R is growing and that's great news because we we do a lot with that money I'm only simply saying that I would just like to see uh, that become a real discussion and if it gets in line before other stuff I mean obviously um, um, but uh, you know I mean we've been do as you know we, we this this council has done a lot we We've, you know, we we've, we've allowed you to create the captain's positions, and now we have some sergeants moving into lieutenant and patrol move and and lower moving into sergeant. So I mean, we created that latitude in the department, which I think is good for morale and good for the department. Um, 
but I'm just, again, trying to balance. You know, I, just, I get a lot of concerns right now, and I know people get really hypersensitive right now when we have events like what happened in Texas and all the other things, and they get really sensitive about what are we doing with our school, what do we do, and, I, and so I get that. But I just think it's a, it is a good time to revisit and say, hey, an SRO is something. Um, and only because, and this isn't, about, this isn't about having a cop at the school with a gun. I, and I think you know this, Chief, but just I'm saying this for the public. But an SRO is a mentoring program. I mean, th these, th this, is, this is proactive policing, right? This is not reactive policing. These are SROs make, a, they influence the students that, they're, they're, that they see each day. They have um, positive role model presence with these students. And that's what I love about the program so much. Um, is it as important as having you know, an officer on the street preventing crime? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's important. And so I would just, I'm only asking that we could just keep that in our minds moving forward with Measure R funds. And maybe when, maybe in March or February, if we could, if it's not something we could do now, put it in there. And I know if we put it in there now, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't get the position anyways, because we're trying to fund in front of that with other positions. But I would just like to see something at some point be worked in for an SRO position, and that's, that's all. I appreciate it, Chief, thank you. Yeah, and I've, and I've heard you in the past about that, yeah. and I, I'm I hopeful know. we will get to a place where we have you know, our robust staffing in place that allows us for that career development, but I will tell you, in spite of the events that have happened around the nation, and specifically in Texas, when there are issues that occur, the organization does pivot and provide that support and that visibility and the things that reassure the parents that were there and were present, including yours truly. So um, we will continue to do that in spite of other challenges that we have as we move forward. And through the city manager, I commit, we'll continue to look at how those models can look in the future, even if perhaps maybe it's a hybrid um, or something like that. And I appreciate the, what you guys have done recently and, and you and you've done with Mr. Hines and having the extra police presence and visibility and all that. So yeah, that doesn't go unnoticed. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So Mayor, I'll continue having discussions with the chief and when we believe it's appropriate, we'll, be def we'll definitely bring that before you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Okay. So are there any other items or issues? Um, so just again to, will we be, and I don't know where we left off and maybe I'm just not, uh, don't remember, but will we be visiting, I know we've, we're talking about, you know, the other things we're working on with ideas about the uh, lighting landscape, fixing all that, but we, we did get a presentation recently about what it would take, the, what kind of money it would take with option, you know, we had different options were presented for Mr. Solis and I don't know where that got left off at. I don't remember what, where. Well, uh, we had a. We had a good discussion. Um, Parks' baseline budget for uh, FY22-23 is now sitting at about four hundred and maybe six thousand dollars. I believe there's a staff report in, in four hundred and three thousand dollars, and so that gets us the level of services that we we currently enjoy. Um, in order to get to mowings every week and um, that sort of top tier service, it would create, it would, there would be a need for another $500,000 um, annually uh, in order to do that. And I think that tops $900,000. And so one of the things I would recommend um, is that we get through this budget process. Um, but I have a long list of policy items that I wanted to put before council for discussion during August and September. Parks is at the top of that list. And so even though this discussion, and it was a great discussion, um, uh, it, it, it's part of the budget discussion, but given the gravity of the situation, we've got to continue talking about this. Uh, the city has 21 parks, um, in my opinion, as the new guy, and, um, that as money was available, we created more parks. And I don't know if there was any thought or reasoning uh, about the long-term implications of the maintenance of those parks. And now we're in a situation where now we have to address it. Um, you know, we've got LLDs that are using 1990 rates. So, and, and the LLDs are not dispersed. Um, evenly throughout the city. So we've got to figure out a way. So um, 
it's, it's a larger issue. It's a bigger issue. And so I think it actually deserves its own series of conversations. Um, and then if we decide to do something or come up with a solution, uh, then we do that in the public forum. Um, if there's a need to amend the budget based on anything new, then we'll, we can amend the budget at any time and increase those services. A budget is just a plan. That's all it is. I usually don't like to amend it any more than twice a year, but, um, but it is just a plan. But I think given the gravity of the situation, uh, I would recommend we go with the baseline service, but when this budget is passed on the 21st, that first meeting in July, you're going to see parks back on the menu. And we're going to, because we need to keep discussing, you know, how do we figure this out? How do we solve this problem? It's a big problem. That's my recommendation, Mayor. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. So if, if, we, if, 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 we, sh if we pivot in July and come back and start talking about parks, any, de any decisions that are made at that point about what we want to do, does it not then affect our budget that we just approved? I mean... It, the, budget that we, the budget that we're going to approve can be amended at any time during that biennial. Okay. So whatever we decide. And I, and I, and I, I appreciate you... Um, Go ahead. You got something to go ahead. Oh. Uh, I appreciate that. And like you said, it's just a plan. And I'm just, like I said, I'm three and a half years on my, in, I'm three and a half years in on my term. And, and what to me is still was one of the main things that I wanted to see solved, you know, and not, and I'm not saying, you know, you haven't been here three and a half years, so, but I'm just saying I've been here three and a half years and we still have yet solved this and we don't even really have a plan. We have some ideas but we don't really have a solid plan and I just, it's, it is frustrating because I just don't seem like it's, it's that can that just keeps getting bigger and we just keep kicking it. Right. And now we're just pushing it down the road because it's so big. So I look forward to those discussions in July on this and see if we can't get something moving forward on this topic. Mayor, I'll offer you this in hopes of uh, somewhat mitigating your frustration. I think we've got more transparency on this problem now than we ever have. And so before we can, if you've all heard me say it, we can't solve it unless we can see it. And so I think thanks to Armando, I'm sorry, Director Solis and Director Boring and their staffs, I think that, you know, we can dissect and trisect. At least now we know where the problem is. Now the question is, how do we fix it? So we're further along, and um, so I hope that helps. I, at least that's my best attempt. Okay. But uh, we're, we're, we are further along now than we ever have been. So anything else from the council on the uh, budget discussion before we move on? All right, and no public comment? No, pu no okay. public comment. All right, uh, we'll move on to item D, or I'm sorry, item H2, discussion and consideration of the resolution establishing the COVID-19 nonprofit grant program and the appropriation of American Rescue Plan Act revenues to fund the program. Good evening, Mayor, members of City Council, Amy Mendes, Economic Development Manager. I am back this evening to talk about the COVID-19 nonprofit grant program. A couple of weeks ago, we were here and Council approved the COVID-19 Small Business Assistance Program, which was launched on June 1st. And we have, I think we're at about 15 applications now. So we are gonna start um, reviewing those and sending them over for financial review. So look, I think we're off to a good start. Um, we haven't had too many hiccups. The web page is operational and uh, that's moving along. So the next program that we are wanting to launch is the COVID-19 nonprofit grant program. Back in October, um, City Council directed staff to allocate $150,000 of the ARPA funds, American Rescue Plan Act funds, to nonprofit assistance in Galt. The ARPA funds may be used by municipalities to provide support to nonprofit organizations which were negatively impacted by the effects of COVID-19. Staff being me, um, <laughs> have evaluated multiple COVID-19 nonprofit grant programs in California. 
I've actually talked to a couple of folks who launched programs. They really run the gamut um, of the way that they were put together and assembled from really, really complicated to um, really, really simple. And so I think we found a good balancing point with the program that we've put together. I did talk to roughly, I wanna say eight um, nonprofits here locally and provided the program to them in draft form just to get some feedback from them. And I did receive comments back from roughly six, I wanna say. Um, I spoke with the Lions Club, the Teen Center, the Sunshine um, Food Pantry, the Galt Sunrise Rotary, and they all provided some really good feedback um, on the program. I also reached out to Laheim and the Historic Society um, just to make sure that everybody had a chance to review it and make sure there was no giant glaring issues. Um, so I did incorporate some comments from um, a few of those nonprofits and they are reflected in the program that you have in your packet. So the program as it's put together um, really is open to nonprofits that are 501c3 nonprofit status um, under the Internal Revenue Service Code. This would be corporations, associations, agencies, or faith-based organizations that have a 501c3. To be eligible, organizations must obviously um, serve residents or businesses in Galt. They must be in good standing with the state of California. Um, they must demonstrate financial impacts directly related to the COVID-19 pandemic, and that's the most important, I think, connection we're trying to make with this program. They, um, you know, examples of this would be increase in services provided. I know the Sunshine Food Pantry had been hit really hard during COVID um, with providing food to those in the community. Um, inability to hold fundraising events. Lots of our um, local um, nonprofits weren't able to hold some of their largest fundraisers, and so um, that could be a qualifying option there. Loss of revenue related to any government mandated shutdowns or increased costs in complying with reopening requirements. And then um, we also have this um, one option here for new projects or programs that would be assisting those impacted by the, the pandemic um, and its economic effects. So individuals in the community or families in the community, if there's a program that a nonprofit wants to create or a project they wanna launch, this would apply to that as well and they must provide proof of insurance. The grant amount for this, um, I did a little bit of research in trying to determine how many nonprofits we have. We have about 60 nonprofits that have a GALT address. 30-ish of those are um, religious organizations, and then the other 30 are 501c3 nonprofits that are offering um, assistance here in the community. With that, um, the range that we had put together was a minimum of 500 and a maximum of 10,000 available per organization. And that really is because we have some really small nonprofits that might want to apply. Um, and then we have some larger organizations that do a lot of um, beneficial things in the community. And so 10,000 was the max that we had placed on it. And I think the idea here would be the same as it is with the business program, where if we have an abundance of funding left over, we may look at applications to determine things that um, maybe prohibited folks from qualifying, or if there are larger projects that they wanted funding for that we weren't able to fund, but there's funds left over, we would um, look at modifying the program and potentially coming back to council. Basically, the um, um, application process, um, the applicant would provide a request for a grant amount and a description of how the requested funds will be lessening the financial hardships experienced by the pandemic, so how they were impacted. The request for funding can be made for new programs or activities, which is what I had mentioned just previously. Eligible costs um, that can be applied, this would be loss of earnings or decline in revenues, impacts of canceled fundraising events, um, costs associated with implementation of prevention or mitigation measures, the barriers or partitions that were put in place um, to distance folks or enhanced cleaning measures, testing, um, anything that had to do with employees and um, you know, PPE, things of those nature. 
the reimbursement of expenses related to the organization's response to COVID-19. This could be payroll and benefit costs or costs to retain employees through the um, pandemic. Funding for new projects or programs designed to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. For the application process, um, I am looking to open this on July 5th. I'm trying to get through some of the small business assistance applications first before launching this. So July 5th is the target date. It would be open for 30 days. This is a lot more simplified than the business assistance program in terms of the application and what would be um, requested. The uh, webpage will be created very similar to what we did for the small business assistance program and an application will be available for download. We're gonna have these actually not be submitted online. We are gonna have them as a PDF fillable so that we can review them um, in-house, print them, and be able to utilize them and modify them as needed so that folks can review them in-house. The complete and eligible applications will be reviewed by a panel which consists of myself and then a member of the finance department and from the parks and recreation department. Obviously, finance has a little bit more insight on the financial side of things, but Parks and Recreation really has their thumb on the nonprofits in town and sort of understands what some of those needs are. We'll meet to discuss the applications and make recommendations to the city manager for funding. And the city manager will make the final award determinations. We'll begin marketing and outreach efforts um, with direct contact to the nonprofits. One of the nice things about this, instead of having to do mailers to hundreds and hundreds of businesses, which I'm doing right now, um, we have access to all of them. So we know how to get in touch with them and we can provide them the information for the program. We'll do additional advertising on the city's social media platforms and through our newsletter. Honestly, you know, at the end of the day, the goal here is to get as much of this funding out to the nonprofits as possible. And so being flexible and working with them, um, even in talking to some of the nonprofits Particularly, I had a conversation with the teen center, and there was a concern, you know, we just don't know how sophisticated some folks are in filling out applications. And, you know, there's not a lot of them, and so I think it'll be a little bit easier for us to handhold versus the small business assistance where we're anticipating to have several hundred applications come through. And so um, this, I think, a little bit more um, assistance that we can provide at the city level. And that concludes my presentation. I'm open to any questions that you guys might have on the program. Council, do we have questions for Ms. Mendez? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Amy Mendez. You gave us an excellent uh, presentation, and that's why we are asking for nonprofit. Uh, my just a clarification. Uh, uh, on the report, you said uh, the staff said it's going from 500 to $10,000. And we have a 60 business, 30s, 501C, and 30 other, right? Uh, what, because there is a minimum requirement. When the application passed the minimum requirement, then what kind of criteria you guys might be using from 500 to 10,000? If you can a little bit, uh, give me the insight. So if you review the actual program guidelines that are included in the staff report, I tried to keep the um, oh. presentation short just because I didn't want to have to you know, go into a lot of detail and you know, bore everybody. But um, we are requiring that they provide us with their agency budget showing actual revenue and expenditures. Um, we're asking for, and that's actually for 2019, 20, and 21. We kind of want to see what that looks like across the board. We're looking for current operating budget, showing revenue and expenditure projections. Um, we're also looking for any assistance, other assistance that they received, um, whether it be um, Paycheck Protection Program, Economic Injury and Disaster Loans, the California Relief Grant, which is still open and um, people are able to apply for. And so we also are asking questions about what it is that they're requesting funding for. So we're trying to ver verify what the COVID-related loss is so that we have an idea of what we can fund them. And then if it's a new project, we're asking for how it's going to affect um, you know, folks that are affected, that were impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic and how that helps them. So you know, it's a, it's a comprehensive application. We're trying to gather as much information as possible 
and really looking at what that grant amount is to balance it so that we have an idea. And you know, it might mean that we don't fund it fully. It might be that we don't see the justification for a full 10,000, but we fund it at five because we see the need for that amount. Um, so there's some flexibility built in. Okay, but what I'm talking about, if you 10,000 or you make a decision 5,000 or 4,000, it can be depend on the what kind of revenue you have, or it depends on how many employees they have and how it can work. It can I think be. It's, it really, when they are, they have to apply and they have to give us a justification of what they are asking for. So us understanding big picture. This isn't one of those. What was their revenue loss? Yeah. I mean, we are looking for that though. That is something we are, you know, wanting to understand if they did have a significant revenue loss as a result of a fundraiser that wasn't able to be held. A, you know, big crab feed that they do every year. Understanding what that revenue impact is, but also looking at other funds that they've received through other avenues, because there's been lots of other programs out there for nonprofits to receive funding through. So, um, you know, I think it's it's going to be a you know comprehensive sort of look at that. Thank you. Thank you for the explanation. Thank you. Ms. Mendez, I, um, two questions. Um, kind of piggybacking on what the um, vice mayor was saying, uh, I'm thinking, you know, if, if we had, <clears throat> if you had, uh, you know, 100, or I'm sorry, you said there's about, there's about 60 nonprofits and 30 of them are faith-based, so we, let's just say we end up with 30 that are, you know, like Rotary and, you know, your typical ones that come to mind when you think of nonprofits, Lions Club, you know, so on and so forth. Um, at like a seven thousand, let's say that they applied for. It's fine. I know it's between five and ten, but let's say you had, you know, those all apply for seven. You're only talking about twenty organizations that would get that money. So I'm starting to think like, and maybe I'm wrong. I guess we won't know till we actually see what kind of applications come in. But I'm more, I'm concerned that maybe 150 isn't going to be enough. But maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I just feel like. Um, I guess I guess we'll see um, when it comes to the money how 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 quickly. So if if someone applies for let's say that we have an organization that applies for ten thousand, they say you know and they justifiably prove that they lost ten thousand dollars in potential, you know, uh, fundraising or whatever, uh, and other costs you know together is ten grand. Um, will you wait? Will there be a time period where you'll wait to see how many other people apply before you start granting those, approving those ten thousand? Yeah, we're going to close the application period before we even review. Okay. Them. And so the idea would be that we're able to review them all together. Okay. And if we did fund all 30 of them with $150,000, we could grant $5,000 to each business or each nonprofit. So, you know, I think that this was a balanced amount. Obviously, not everybody's going to apply for $10,000. So there's some flexibility there. And I think, too, you know, when we can look at it as a whole, it makes it a little bit easier for us to determine how we are divvying that money up. Obviously, if you know, everybody applies for 10,000 and we don't have the money for that, we're going to try to determine what the best route is to um, reduce those amounts based on what the need is by each of those applicants. Right, okay. And then my second question was um, it, just the parameters of the program and <clears throat> where it, uh, is it gonna be reviewed by some, some community development staff? Uh, so this is different. This differs from the business program because of the business program, you're having an outside entity review the financial documents and so on, right? And how is that? But you don't think that'll be the case with this program because you won't. There won't be financial. Doc you're not going to have people that are saying, "I'm not comfortable with having," you know, people in the city staff look at their financial documents. Or do you think it's what's different then? We're looking for revenue and expenditures. We're not asking for tax information. Okay. And so it's just really budget information that we're trying to collect. Um, and I did, you know, actually had one nonprofit who said, I don't know if we would apply because we wouldn't want to um, provide that information. That might be something if we have funding left over, we come back to council and say, because we have to pay a consultant to review every single mm -hmm. application right now. And it's, it's not cheap. <laughs> and so, you know, we're trying to be, um, cognizant of that and you know this is a much less complicated um, overview and you know we're not reviewing tax returns we're just looking at revenue and expenditure information for each um, entity and like I said with 30 it's a lot more manageable for us to do in-house versus going outside to a consultant and so where I was going with this question is that but in part was <clears throat> that 
the parameters of this, you know, that you're, it's reviewed uh, by some staff, and then and then uh, and then uh, our city manager has the final say uh, in that. So, and again, I don't know. And Mr. Splendario just totally stopped me if I'm kind of crossing over. But finding out now how this differs from the other program, my question would be: if we have a third party reviewing program, the other program, but the city manager has full discretion at ultimate decision making. What 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 criteria, Mr. Hines, would you be using to make that final decision if you're not able to see the documents from the other? Well, I'll, I'll base the information on uh, the analysis that's given to me by uh, Ms. Mendez. Um, and then I'll make that decision at that time, um, knowing that uh, that decision uh, will be, I'm sure, um, scrutinized and I will make sure that we'll have proper justification. The other difference is the nonprofits, their tax returns are in the public domain. Okay, so I can go find a form 990 for any nonprofit in this town and tell you what their taxes were. I can't do that for the private indices and the, the, the private businesses. Right. And I so. think and I think that's why this question and that's why I looked at Frank cuz I'm it's we're talking about the, the nonprofit and I think what I'm finding out let's just say this and realizing that there's that verbiage in there is I'm kind of referring to the business program like how would you be able to because you're not able to see those so maybe this could discussion could happen outside because I know we're not talking about the business program right now this is off topic but I just I had I had someone present that to me and it clicked in my mind right now it was like well you know this, uh, how if we have a third party reviewing our things then so we can talk about that off I think too that one clarification is that the city manager's <coughs> discretion yes at the end of the day he has this like final approval on everything but it's pretty black and white we know what the revenue losses and what they uh, what they qualify for under the program and that's what their grant amount is they can't qualify for more than what their you know whatever their max amount is in the <coughs> in the category box. The city manager's discretion will be applied though to determining targeted businesses versus non-targeted. And so I think that's when that will come into play. Um, we do have some gray area there with businesses who were, you know, they don't fit in the hospitality or restaurant or drinking establishment or, you know, under the category of entertainment might be a little flexible. And so I think from that perspective, we will, you know, ask him for some assistance there. Okay. Or I provide a recommendation and he gives me his you know, approval on it. Like I said, my question was geared more towards the other and I just apologize, it was presented to me after we had our approved the other program. Um, so again, this would be open for, we are gonna try to open it July 5th, if we approve it tonight, and it'll be open for how many days? 30 days. 30 days, okay. All right, does anybody see the council have any questions for Ms. Mendez on the program? Hi. I have a, um, a comment. I appreciate the, the outreach you did with the nonprofits. I did receive several telephone calls about this um, and uh, wanted to publicly thank you for your work on this, along with all the other things that you're responsible for. Um, my, uh, I, I, I love the fact that this is out. It was a great staff report, very thorough. Um, having uh, been a part of several nonprofits in the past and, and executive board positions there, this is going to be easy to do. And, and I, I appreciate that because, you know, I'm just thinking back if, if the youth sports league that I was involved with had to do this, um, we could click a couple buttons on a computer, it's, you know, all that would come up. I may even provide my tax information from that league and say, here's what we have. So it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be easy to do. And I appreciate you offering the help um, to our nonprofits because not not all of our people that are involved with nonprofits have the a finance background or anything like that. And so I think this might help um, get you know get more applicants. So appreciate it. Thank you for your work on this. And I would rather get this out sooner than later. So uh, when a if I, we get the business program moving forward and we can get that sort of in a flow with the financial consultant then absolutely, believe me, I'd rather get it open and, and out there and be able to get that moving and closed and done with and beyond. <laughs> sure. So Thank you. And, and when the time for motion is appropriate, I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Well, if anybody else has any comments, if not, I will look for a motion. 
Okay. All right. Well, with that, do we have any public comment on this item? No yeah. public comment. Okay. All right. Um, well, with that, I'll be looking for a motion to adopt the resolution establishing the City of Galt COVID-19 nonprofit grant program and appropriation of 150000 of American Rescue Plan Act ARPA funds to the program. I have motion by Councilmember Lozano. I have a second. I'll second. Seconded by Councilmember Papineau. Can I have a roll call, please? Vice Mayor Sandu. Aye. Councilmember Papineau. Aye. Councilmember Vandenberg. Aye. Councilmember Lozano. Aye. Mayor Farmer. Aye. <clears throat> Resolution approved five zero. Our last item is going to be H three, and it's going to be the uh, May nineteenth, twenty twenty urgency ordinance regarding the transient occupancy tax. Mr. Hines. Mr. Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. I'm going to make a statement. Out of abundance of caution, I will be recusing myself from TOT portion of uh, this discussion, only due to my hotel business interest in this city. So, okay, I'm thank going, you, sir. I'm going to leave. This is the last item. Or? Uh, well, we have council comments and stuff, so we'll call you back in. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Ryan. So members, and when we last spoke about the TOT, um, council was informed that back on May 19, 2020, the council adopted an urgency ordinance to suspend payment of uh, the transient occupancy taxes from our hoteliers. At, the, at this time, we estimate that roughly $280,000 in TOT has been deferred by the two hotels operating in Gulp. The third hotel has been paying their TOT all along. Um, so if the city were to end the emergency, the hoteliers would have until the end of the next quarter to pay the outstanding TOT owed to the city. And so that's written into the uh, urgency ordinance. We reached out to... To the two hoteliers who would um, be subject to this payback. The consensus between the two hoteliers is that there's a preference for a nine-month payback versus a six-month payback. And current law um, indicates that it's a six-month payback, which means that if we pass an ordinance, it'll be effective July 1st, which enables the hoteliers to pay us back on December 31st, 2022. That's the six-month option. What the preference is, based on the consensus between the two hoteliers, is a nine-month option. And so if we choose this option, we'll have to make the action effective October 1st, 2022, uh, which enables the hoteliers to end, um, uh, basically pay us back by the end of the first quarter of 2023. I can't believe we're saying that already. Um, the first quarter of 2023 to defer their TOT. So those are the two options that we're putting before council right now. If there's sort of a general consensus, we will draft a resolution um, to um, do that, and we will have that ready for the June 21st meeting. If there's a, if there's a decision, so six months or nine months. So how would that affect, because I know that the TOT, this is this is kind of a part of the emergency ordinance, a smaller piece of that, right? So by waiting to do, if we were to decide as a council to do the nine month, and that doesn't go into effect till October, how would that affect us being able to do anything with the other piece of it before October? Does that make any sense? Yeah, if you're referring to the local emergency declaration, yeah. So if the council does the nine month, the local emergency uh, resolution or declaration would cease October 1. If the council elects the sixth month, it would cease July 1. You can't, we can't do them separate though because they're tied together, right? They're tied together and on the order of six months and that's why you see that October 1 versus July 1 option. So in essence, we're not changing anything except when we terminate it potentially 
and giving the hoteliers the opportunity to pay in advance because technically they won't have to until the nine month option we give them, right? But it's, it's still in the same fiscal year, still same responsibilities, still same commitments. Yes. I support the nine month option. Mr. Lozano? So I have a question. Um, and I, I was really torn last time we spoke about this. Um, I guess it was not even a week ago, right? <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> um, but here, here's my question, and I, I just, it just popped in my mind because I didn't really even realize we'd be offered a nine, nine-month opportunity. What will that do with our budget that we're um, presumably going to adopt by July 1st? Well, what that means is that, um, as you know, there, there, there are revenues and there are expenditures. It's just that the revenues, the additional one-time revenue from the catch-up with the TOT will not appear in the revenues until the second half of the fiscal year of the first year of the biennial. So... And that's, and that's assuming if we go with a nine-month option that the hoteliers will pay by March 31st. Yes. Okay. I, I, I appreciate that, that answer. Thanks. Now, is this, is, this like a, is this like a deadline, March 31st, or is there like a payment structure that gives them nine months, or is it just like that's the deadline? So they could pay some of it and then pay a little more, or we could just not see a nickel and they could just show up in May and March with all of it. You know, I think we would be, and I'm sorry if I overstayed here, I think we would be open to whatever flexible payments they want to make. It's just that according to the, the municipal code, it's got to be collected and paid by March 31st, 2023. And it's not like they can get out of it. Then this is taxes, you know, death and taxes. It's yes. going to get paid. So, yes. We, and we certainly also have enough money. Uh, to float them the difference in the time being. And that's essentially what we'll be doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think ultimately the idea would be that we would um, put them on alert, that we are going to be ending the emergency on October 1st, and that they have nine months, and that we would anticipate they, A, would start paying all of their TOT on a quarterly basis, and then also make those payments either quarterly, that's typically how they make them, or monthly. And we're welcome, you know, to happy to work with them to kind of determine what that looks like. But um, we definitely would let them know that that deadline would be coming on March 31st. And so they would need to figure out a way to start those payments um, or have a lump sum to us on March 31st, whatever is best for them. So, Ms. Mendez, to clarify that, and maybe I misunderstood, so... They actually, it's not just about the nine months to pay it back, but they they actually currently could be could possibly one of them could currently not be paying right now. So they would they would start paying again their regular payments in October and then be liable to pay the the back by March, right? Okay, so so we're basically giving them also another what three months before they have to start paying regularly on their current, right? Wow. Or no? Basically, the urgency ordinance would still be in place, so they still could defer it. That's yeah. what I'm asking, yeah. The deferral stays in effect effectively uh, until whenever that new drop-dead deadline is, whether it's December 1 or March 30, December 31 or March 31. It's up to them. If they want to start making payments to get out of the hole, that's totally acceptable, or they can, you know... Whatever, just, whatever. Want to, just want to clarify that. And I think in the conversations that I had, they were definitely willing to begin that process. I don't think there was any intent to continue that deferral. Okay. Um, any other council comments? And this would be, just to <clears throat> make sure I understand it right, we're talking about a resolution to end the TOT deferral and require it to be paid back. Uh, the greater emergency, uh, the other parts of that that allow our businesses to uh, serve outside without paying a fee or that, those would still be in effect uh, in, in this situation, right? Those would be in effect until July 1 or 
I'm doing my math, October 1, depending if council chose the December 31st TOT deadline or the March 31st, 2023 deadline, because there's essentially a six month window that is tied between the cessation of the local emergency declaration and the full payment repayment of the TOT. Okay. So, so to answer your question, no, it wouldn't be throughout, they wouldn't enjoy the same period of time that the, the, the hoteliers do. Uh, it'd be, like I said, either July 1 when that, the emergency ends or October 1. Well, that would give us uh, until October 1 if we need to uh, consider any ordinance changes. Uh, maybe we want to keep some of the things that we've learned from COVID. So I, that seems to make sense to make it effective October 1st. Do we have any public comment on this item, Tina? No public comment. Okay. Um, well, I, I, I would be in favor of the nine month. I, I appreciate you reaching out to the businesses um, and the city being flexible with these two hotels being, I mean, we don't have a lot of them in town. They obviously were hit with a heavy burden um, from the pandemic. So I, I appreciate the council's willing to do this and I, I think I would be willing to um, support that if, if that's the, so are we looking for a, an official vote or just a consensus here on this? Just a consensus and I think I have that. Okay. All right. Well, with that, we will move on to. I'm going to ask uh, someone to ask Vice Mayor Sandy to come back in. Yes. And then while the Vice Mayor, can someone step out and ask the Vice Mayor? And while the Vice Mayor is making his way back, I'm going to ask staff. Yes. If they could come in and um, see if there's any comments by staff. Mr. Mayor, I can. Yes, please proceed with comments. Okay, Stephanie. let's see if uh, Stephanie Van Stein, our Human Resources Director. Yes, good evening. Um, I just thought I would announce that we have a couple of key recruitments that are ending on Friday. Um, our Deputy Public Works Director position. Um, we also have a Senior Engineer and Associate Civil Engineer opening. Um, all of those are closing on Friday. So if you know of anyone, who's a licensed professional engineer, please let them know to apply. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Parks and Rec Director Armando Solis. Mr. Christmas. <laughs> uh, just uh, want to talk a little bit about our Saturday market. I wanted to thank our staff for their uh, great job. They worked really hard. Um, I understand there was some good barbecue out there. and. Um, so we have our next one planned on July 2nd, which will coincide with our IDC events. We will be having everything on that same day, our run, our parade, our Saturday market. So um, it's gonna be a, a long day. Um, and then uh, starting Friday, we have our movie in our parks. Uh, that series starts. Saturday, our concerts in our parks start. So we have a lot going on at Parks and Recreation. So. Uh, we'll also have the military military vehicles in the parade, and we'll be reaching out to you guys to see if you guys would like to be on that for the parade this year. So be prepared to get a call from Jackie. Director Solis, yes, I understand you had some top-tier talent uh, judging the barbecue uh, contest on Saturday. Uh, any Anyone that we know? Yeah, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Did you Air Farmer and uh, Councilman Vandenberg also helped. Very good. Yeah, we got we got a little barbecue education. My Mr. Sleeves, he's like, you see how that one's cut right there? So that tells you. And I'm like, oh, I did. So he was educating us about his barbecue knowledge. <laughs> All right, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, Finance Director Matt Boring, who's about to birth his first budget, 
as finance director. <laughs> it's almost there. Uh, I just want to announce that we were able to fill our budget analyst position, so we're excited to welcome uh, Lana Nielsen to the city, uh, and she brings over 25 years of experience, so we're really excited. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Chief Kalinowski. Good evening again, Mayor, members of council. So um, last Friday, we had the Beyond Call of Duty end of watch ride to remember that was here um, outside of City Hall. M many of you were there, some members of the public. And so we um, took an opportunity to remember Harmon and um, the, his ultimate sacrifice. So it's yet one more event that we've had um, recognizing Harmon. And we are still preparing our plans for um, his first year anniversary. Um, which will be on August 26th, and there will be more to come on that as the summer unfolds. Um, and then lastly, internally, it was alluded to during some prior discussions, we were um, able to promote some folks internally, so effective this last Monday, the 6th, uh, Rod Fisher was promoted to sergeant, and then next Monday, the 13th, um, Kyle Slater will be a sergeant um, being promoted and um, starting his role as a supervisor. So we have some other anticipated moves and things going on and th that will occur once we have some stability with our staffing as we've alluded to, to other planning efforts to making sure that we have people in place. And so when we're afforded the opportunity to do that, we'll do something like that probably uh, in the fall for we'll at least have one more supervisor. Um, and then that's all I have except for, I think, Council Member Lozano. I, I just have a quick question, Chief. Uh -huh. Start, sorry to spring this on you, but it just kind of dawned on me. Um, I was out and about today and happened to run into uh, probably a handful of CAPS volunteers. And the one thing that I have noticed or haven't noticed is their involvement in the community events. Are we, are we prepared to get them back out? And uh, the, because they were just such a great uh, contact in, and with the community. Um, at, at these events and I yes and we do when when um, we have relevant events and so we had them out there for the historical society event about three months ago I guess it was now and then um, they'll be there for the fourth of July event and other and obviously national night out um, so as we kind of come out and get more normal yeah I, I, I kind of figured that was the case um, but, but you know I was thinking uh, the Saturday markets would be a great opportunity for them to wander around and be an extra set of eyes, but also also make that connection. So anyhow, yeah, I can. Yeah, let me talk to staff about that and yeah. see. I, okay. We usually do that based, you know, we get prompted from, you know, the event holder. Right. Maybe we miss that. So we'll, we'll look at that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no problem. Uh, and that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Community Development Director Craig Hoffman, who we haven't heard from tonight. Most people consider that a blessing. <laughs> so council members, uh, on Monday, your building officials started. Zach Carver, he previously worked for the city uh, back in, I think, 2018 and 19. And so it's great to actually have a building official. We haven't had one since uh, beginning of 2019. Added service, mentoring, and it's great to have that uh, professional expertise. So we're excited to have him on board. And then uh, Planning Commission this upcoming Thursday, something this council doesn't want to see, but you're going to see it, a lot of implementation measures for this housing element. And it's something you're going to be seeing in the upcoming months, ordinances and resolutions to implement that thing. You're right, Craig. We didn't want to hear from you tonight. All right. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you all. All right. Public Works Director Mike Selling. Thank you, City Manager. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Um, I guess I'll keep with the theme. Uh, we had a couple of folks uh, sail off into the sunset on us last week, uh, Mr. Mark Clarkson, our city engineer, and uh, Mr. Gary Whitehead. And uh, Mr. Clarkson had about 11 years with the city, and Mr. Whitehead, over 30 years. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, a lot of institutional knowledge uh, walked out on us. But um, I think the good news is, is that they're both more than willing to uh, pick up the phone if we should ever need uh, uh, to pick their brains. Uh, and then I want to welcome uh, Marshall Bobson, uh, our new senior equipment mechanic, who's just started. And uh, we've been without a mechanic period for 
oh, several months now. So we're excited to have him on board and I'm hopeful that we'll be filling the other uh, mechanic position again shortly. So, uh, and that'll help our streets guys who've been doing an admirable job of keeping our fleet uh, maintained in that interim uh, to uh, free them up for uh, more of their typical duties. So uh, with that, thank you very much. Thank you, Director Selling. Uh, Economic Development Manager, Amy Mendez. I just wanted to briefly mention again the um, business grant. We had launched that on June 1st and um, it's available online. So if you are running around and see any business owners or business managers out there, uh, make sure to let them know it's on City of Galt, it's on the front page right now. <clears throat> it's cityofgalt.org forward slash business grant. So it's a pretty simple application, um, that initial one. So we do have mailers that we're sending out right now, flyers that are going out to all of those businesses that we have business um, license information for. So those will land hopefully this week in the mail. So, um, but yeah, if you could just spread that word, that'd be great. That's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Alrighty, thank you. Uh, City Clerk, Tina Hubert. Nothing, thank you. All right, Mr. Mayor, that concludes staff comments. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to item J, comments by city council members and future agenda items. Vice Mayor Sandu. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> thank you for the staff. Uh, thank you for the public comment. Also, thank you for the public involvement in the city council meeting. Uh, congratulations to the new uh, youth commissioner. Congratulations to the new city employees and also congratulations to the promotion. Uh, I did a few things I attended. I joined Saturday Market. It was a good turnout. Uh, Mayor Farmer and Council Member Jay Bernberg were challenged to win barrel race. It was interesting. <laughs> and there was a barbecue competition. I also got a chance to see the end of watch Right to remember trailer that made a stop in Galt to honor Galt police officer Arminder Garewal. On May 30th, 2022, Memorial Day at the cemetery at Jewish Drive, remembering those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice, leaving loved ones behind in service to our great nation. I on uh, May 21st, I attended community cleanup day with the beautification committee members and youth commissioner. And that's all, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Councilman Papadow. Uh Thanks once again to the staff uh, for uh, the thorough and concise reports. Um, and your yeah, hats off to the Galt Arno Cemetery District. They did uh, a fine job uh, once again with uh, Memorial Day. And uh, I didn't, wasn't at the market uh, late enough for the barbecue. I was out there early and quite appreciated uh, being able to get my wristband put on and walk from one end to the other with my uh, Bloody Mary. <laughs> so that was, <laughs> that was nice. That's all I have. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Vandenberg. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, congratulations to the Youth Committee. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, Youth Commissioners is a neighbor of mine, a very fine young man that helps uh, an elderly couple next to live next to him, putting up lights and Christmas lights and that sort of thing. So it's very good to see him uh, take that position and uh, I'm sure he'll do great things with it. Uh, I really appreciate public comment. Uh, it's the one time when the public can address the city council staff, city manager, and legal all at the same time. So uh, it, good on you for taking advantage of it. Uh, thank you to the staff for the, for the good reports. It's, it's, it's a lot of material to read, but it's uh, very informative. And I would just like to say to the things that were said earlier or decided on earlier, uh, it's not always you know, the city manager had a program in a previous city for uh, bringing set regular citizens up here and giving them just such scenarios and making them decide and suddenly they realize it's not as fun as it sounds on Facebook. And so 
I, I don't necessarily take pleasure in you know every decision I make or decision I support, I should say, uh, but I do do my best to uh, do what's best for the city overall, uh, top to bottom. So I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilman Lozano. Yeah, I was uh, I was down for for a good week, and uh, so <clears throat> my uh, family had to divide and conquer some things and. But I was able to get out to a few events, uh, many that were already mentioned. Um, but I also wanted to say that on Saturday, um, I was able to attend the Mo celebration of life for um, Maisie Myrick, who was a longtime resident here in Galt, um, Rotarian, and uh, and longtime member of the um, United Methodist Church. She was 94 years young, and. Um, one of the things that was mentioned uh, by one of the speakers was that most people outlive their friends if they're 94 years old. And uh, this certainly wasn't the case. There were a couple hundred people in that small church. And, I, and I'll tell you, uh, some were family, but uh, she had friends uh, of all ages. And so it was, uh, it was nice to honor her, uh, see some old friends that I hadn't seen uh, for a while. For a while, but uh, um, yeah, it was uh, it, it was a good it was a good showing and and, and certainly a good uh, celebration. The um, honor ride that came through last Friday was amazing. Um, you know, these uh, honoring our fallen officers throughout the country is is uh, is important and and certainly something that we want to continue to do and not forget. So I thank the chief for his work on uh, really putting something special together for uh, the one year anniversary of Harmender's passing. And um, there's some other things, but I'm gonna stop there. And uh, thank you uh, for the community that came out and spoke. Uh, and certainly thank you to staff for, for all the reports that were very thorough. All right, thank you, sir. <clears throat> Uh, I too want to thank the public who spoke tonight. Um, public comment's always important, and I'm glad to see people involved. Um, I want to uh, thank the the Youth Commission and the Beautification Commission for another good cleanup day, as the Vice Mayor mentioned, and um, the um, group from End of Watch Ride that brought their trailer and their group here it was nice to see in their travels all across the country that we were able to include Galt in there in their stop and it was very um, very sobering to see all those faces on the trailer. Um, also the Memorial Day ceremony as Mr. Papadon mentioned was very good. Um, again very well uh, hats off to the cemetery um, district for doing a great job decorating. It was a great event. Um, so many flags just blanketing the entire cemetery. It's just uh, crazy to think about how many people have served in this, in this little town. Uh, have served their country. And then lastly, the, uh, uh, I actually met the new CS2, CSO officer today with uh, Lieutenant, now Lieutenant Azevedo, who came by and, and was able to have a chat with him and, and look forward to good things with him. And uh, lastly, but not least, I want to thank, you know, again, Parks and Rec staff for all the hard work with the markets, uh, with the Saturday market, uh, Jackie, Ashley, Carrie, all the volunteers that, I'm, that I don't know their names for all the cleanup they did after and did a great job, it was a lot of work. Um, being a barbecue judge was, you know, it's a tough job, but somebody has to do it. So uh, we had a good time with that. And I want to thank Councilman Vandenberg for allowing me to win our barrel race. Uh, yeah. So uh, anyways, um, it was a good event. And I look forward to uh, the one on July 2nd, which should be very, very busy. So with that, we'll wrap up and uh, we'll adjourn the meeting at 8.24 p.m. Good night.